Hello everyone, welcome to Snowshoe West Virginia. We are here for the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup. What a place to be, sure. Where else would you be on a Sunday? Things coming down the wire in this category. Under 23 men will get us underway presently. Look at that. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth for this one is Bart Brenchins. Bart, absolutely stunning place, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Snowshoe is so beautiful, especially now uh, in the morning with the sunrise, the clouds still in the valley. It's cold it's actually outside. It's perfect, actually. I don't know what you're saying about cold, but no, this place was shrouded in mist and rain for most of the start of the week. We didn't see a whole lot of those views, but over the last three days, they have all mercifully burnt off. The sun's come out and we are ready for a full day of cross country Olympic mountain bike race. And there's a young American with some eyes on a big performance today, Bjorn Riley. Alongside him, Xavier de Oliveira from Brazil. Absolutely great track here, Bar, as well. Yeah, but the riders, they have to be careful, especially now with uh, the cool conditions in the morning. There's a lot of moisture on the, on the track, actually, which, which, which makes it very slippery in some of the downhills. Yeah, you can see the clouds rolling around, just getting burnt off there. It does, it's a damp place first thing in the mornings. This a lot of it comes up from the ground. Braden Johnson had a great short track race, fifth place, US national champion. Another US rider on the first row. Here he is, though. Dario Lilo, second in the overall, and he needs a big performance today. He really needs to beat Adrian Boishi if he is to uh, have any designs on taking that title this season. Luca Martin just heading to the line there. The Frenchman races with his heart in his sleeve. Had that big disappointment in Val de Sole Trentino with a double puncture. I always feel bad bringing it up again, Bart, but yeah, absolutely but he, heartbreak. Yeah, he almost won that race. He did, it didn't happen for him, but yeah. Carter Woods, the big Canadian, warming up nicely for the finals in Mont Saint Anne next weekend. Second place in the short track for Carter. So powerful. He went past, we were stood trackside watching it. He went past us like an absolute train. Riley Amos, though, home winner in the short track. And that's the third US rider on the first line today. Really, really nice guy. Interviewed him earlier in the week, Riley Amos. Really uh, polite, softly spoken, but my goodness, put him on a race bike, watch him go. Look at that. Anyway, here we are. Here's confirmation off the start list. Riley Amos, Carter Woods, Martin, Lilo, Johnson, Malacarne, Xavier de Oliveira, Pereira, Riley, Leland, Matis Gwey, Huashi. There he is, the overall title leader on the second row. He had that flat tire in the short track. That's, That's why. right, yeah. Gro Lambert, Shell, Beard, Clark, Trudler, Pedersen, Handley. Mario Bear from Austria, we should see him come through. Ethan Rose, Luke Moyer, Wilson, Crayer, Corneille. Yeah, Adrian Boishi, really, really unlucky with that um, flat tire in the short track race. We don't really see we don't really see many mechanicals in short track, do Not we? Not that many normally, but uh, yeah, last uh, Thursday it was for these under-23 riders. The short track uh, it was more like a small cross-country course. It was a, it was a it lengthy a, short track, wasn't it? And it was uh, with that rock garden, that uh, steep descent, uh, the, a lot of rocks and sharp rocks, and also in training, many many riders had uh, punctures here on this track. Well, we only come to the States once a year, and we do so for one of the best race tracks of the year. They're under starters orders here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. And they are off and racing at the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country World Cup in Snowshoe. Luca Martin right in the middle of your screen in the green jersey but Carter Woods on his right hand side just out dragging him up the hill. Bjorn Riley's got off the line very, very well too. 
Yeah, and the riders have to do one start lap plus and six full laps. slightly just the bottom of the screen, Bart. You can see them just getting bottled slightly. That happened yeah. in the short track as well. As well, as well. Even if it goes slightly uphill this part, the riders sprinting to the top, and yet it goes with a little bit of a turn in that. And they are out onto the start loop. Carter Woods sits up. Job done, he's got off the line quickly. And but then that turn in front of the tech feed zone. This, right. this is the first tech feed zone where also feed is allowed, and there's another uh, tech zone where only te technical support is allowed. That's later on on this course. Right, he almost stuck it up the inside of Luca Martin there into third place. There's a big rut right in the middle of that screen. You want to get the front wheel into. And this is the feed tech zone. Problems for someone in there. We didn't quite see who it is. Quite an aggressive exit into this, straight back into the pack. I mean, this category is uh, wild at the start. So much. <laughs> Adrenaline in their bodies and they go full speed immediately from the start on and actually where the riders are right now It goes slightly down. So this is on high speed this section and Yeah, then suddenly they will entering the forest again. I think you're being polite there wild is the right word for under 23 Cross country in the men's category. It has been fireworks all year long and it's Carter Woods who is leading There's Boisci in the red and white jersey of the overall series leader Riley Amos, he was on the second place. Yeah, a real uh, a real bike riders race course. This really good technical descending, high average speed the whole way round. What climbs there are, they're not super steep. They're there's, just sort there's, of longer. There's, yeah, there's one which is quite steep actually, and, and also quite long. But that's also the only one. I mean, this part where the riders are right now. It's uh, it goes slightly down. It's on high speed and also slightly up. But not so steep. And most of the time we see yeah, little groups riding together, so tight racing in general. Yeah, you can see how tight it is here, and you can see it just bottlenecking backwards as we see the star again. Watch the rider in the blue jersey in the centre of your screens. Canada's Carter Woods just moves across Riley Amos and, and gets to the see... top of the climb. Now look at this bottleneck just behind them. Yeah, here in the back of the group you see riders bar to bar, and then a mistake is easily made. Sasha Udima with the number 15 on his bike. Second row start, he had and a good start immediately, but look at Carter, Carter Woods. Woods. <laughs> yeah, you know you're trying when the tongue comes out. Bjorn Riley, though, best start of the year for him as well. And Bart, I mean, there is something about a home race for the American athletes that they just rise to the top at, You don't saw they? it in short track already, three on the first row, it means, yeah, it's business for them. And look who's at the front, though, Adrian yeah. Boisci in that red jersey and the red gloves. The overall of, points leader. Yeah, if you speak about uh, US rivals, yeah, really Amos, he was there as well. And Bjorn Rayleigh, another US rider. But Adrian Brachy with the number one on his bike. Second with Carter Woods in front of him. Luca Martin. The numbers one, two, and three from the short track now leading the race. Yeah, so 154 points between. Washi and Lilo. And that's the second uh, tech zone where only technical support is allowed, so no feeding. And that's okay. right at the bottom of this big climb that brings you back up towards Snowshoe Village itself. So it spreads out the field a little bit. That part. Car Carter Woods just kind of doing the Luca Schwarzbauer role here, just stringing them out a bit, driving the pace on at the front. He's a very powerful rider. I think this course suits him really well. And of course, next week we go to Canada. And he likes yeah. to show his strength. So we talk about yeah how the American riders come to the foreign home turf. My goodness, don't the Canadians do the same? Monty and Anne next weekend, arguably the toughest cross-country Olympic tra track off them all. Awaits. And the number six here in the race, Bryden Johnson, actually another U.S. rider, young guy. He had a very good short track result last Thursday. Yeah, he's having a real breakthrough season. He's got the US national champs jersey now, Johnson, as this front group is just separating itself from the chasing pack. And these really are the big hitters. These are the guys that we expected to be at the front of this one. Because they just turn into this really choppy little descent now. So this is where the riders have been riding on uh, Thursday as well in the short track. This little short, steep yeah, descent, Joe, very slippery. <laughs> It's really choppy, isn't it? Really, it is, really yeah. uneven surface. And there's a natural spring in there as well, so it's always wet coming down that little descent. 
and from there on actually it's a lot of single track before riders coming back to the start finish area where they're entering the highest point of the course with that rock garden yeah, the, the climb up to that rock garden bar, uh, is that somewhere we're expecting to see attacks today? Quite steep, quite punchy climb? I mean, from there on, uh, th yeah, if you are entering the rock garden, it's a uh, high speed section actually to the last bit uh, to the finish line. Overtaking from there on is not that easy anymore. We saw a couple of sprints in the short track, but most of it, when you are leading, you will win. Well, sounds simple when you say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not at the end of a cross country race, <laughs> it's believe not me. simple at all. <laughs> Um, the big rock section are heading up towards now. I think they, they rebuild it every year, and we have do, previous yes. versions of it. I think there's been more different lines in it. It seems like there's just really one line this year. This, this year, it's I would say it's the most easiest from what I have seen so far. We had some big uh, drops uh, in it before, but this year, there's one actually a very simple line on the right side, and probably most of the riders they will take it and not taking any risk of trying and uh, make another line on it. I rode it, or um, should say tried to ride it in 2019, and I remember it being very, very difficult. There wasn't really an easy option. No, and this no. season, that line to the rider's right is just basically straight, straight through, isn't it? It is, that's how it is. So Carter Wood still leading, with Adrian Brachy behind him, Luca Marte, really Amos. Bjorn Riley in fifth still for the USA, so two Americans up in the top five at the minute. Then Johnson in seventh, so good home showing so far for them. Here is that rock section. On the right side, all the riders are riding. Is that Amos just cutting across? There must be a line that you can cut across towards the uh, right-hand side of it. Carter Woods just stretching things out on this descent. Yeah, there's a little bit of time to relax, to stretch your legs. You you still keep your speed. Actually, you can see here as well on the open sections of the course, uh, the, the, it's hard packed, it's good rolling. So on high speed, and this is the last corner before the finish line. Six full more laps to do for these riders. It's Carter Woods, Adrian Brachy with a small gap. And then Riley Amos chasing hard now to close that gap immediately. Yep, Boashi welding himself to the back of Carter Woods. Obviously feels like he's the danger man. And Bart, tell us about it from a racer's point of view. Is it a, Does it get more complicated towards the end of the season when there's titles up for grabs and there's points to be calculated? Yeah, sometimes there are races in the race. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to... Uh, to, to call, you need to have your points for the overall standings, for the title. And then you don't have to take too many risks in, because it, it might go wrong with a technical problem, the crash, these things. So riders are thinking in, in, about a couple of things in a race like this. And of course, for these who only a single event counts, yeah, they go full full speed. So and, and some of them, like um, Adrian Brigi, of course, he's the leader. And the, the for him, even if second place might count a lot for, for the overall title. Yeah, we saw it yesterday during the Elite Women's Downhill. Aaron Gwynn actually almost called it on the nose. Valentina Hole was leading on her run. He said, you might just see her anchor up a little bit and slow down now because she will be thinking in her head about the title. And sure enough, she rolled off, I mean, slightly. She was still third on the podium, but just no, but there's that a champion's there's a mentality yeah. of like, am I going to continue risking not finishing? And especially now, I mean, the descent that the riders entering right now, that's definitely still slippy. It's very technical. There's a lot of roots, rocks big drops and it might go wrong very easily this is like this is like a mini tweed valley in scotland section this through here have you ridden it <laughs> i've ridden it yeah it's that's hard that's very hard and you see still here at the at, at the bottom of that how muddy it still is there's still some water coming from a spring or a little river i don't know what it is but i love still to see wet. it but i love to see the natural features in it these cross-country race tracks that's mountain biking this is a beautiful course i like it too and also that uphill with where the riders coming later on uh, with a lot of roots and rocks and very slippery sections on it H hard to make even on your bike but see for these riders no problems at all have you seen the photo of kenta gallagher over that jump twisted up sideways of course it is <laughs> and it's very narrow over there yeah, it's not much room for <laughs> maneuver but he manages to maneuver in some tight spaces that lad yeah but he's uh, he is doing uh, downhill too, yeah. back in the days. He's got a bit of style about him. Carter Woods still leading the way here. 
ahead of Adrian Boishino. Correction, Boishino yep, has Brady. the front of the race. And there's yep. Braden Johnson in third ahead of Riley Amos. Yeah, on this climb, actually, it's also difficult if you are riding very close to each other to make it on your bike. Because you need to have a little bit of space in front of you, some clear vision. If a rider in front of you makes a mistake, and it's sliding away, then you have to get off your bike too. Well, we've talked about it before this season, haven't we? The bit of cross-country gamesmanship where you just, if you're in the lead, stall the bike at the top of the climb a little bit, stop pedaling, and the ripple effect of the riders close behind you on balance. Bart's looking at me as if he's <laughs> never done that before. but <laughs> It's a trick that comes actually from Sagar Cross, but look at this view over there. Beautiful. Stunning. Absolutely stunning part of the world. You can see why they wrote the song about it. Boishy out the front. He's pushing hard immediately here on the longest climb of the course for the first time here. Would you have expected to see more of Dario Lilo at the front of this one early doors? He had a very strong part of the season in the middle part, I would yeah. say, around Lenzerheide. The gang, he was Fal strong as well. Yeah, I mean, maybe he was in his best shape uh, this season, and, and now he's struggling a little bit. It's a long season as well, a different from yeah, years before, so riders, they have to deal with that too. And that seems to be for... Yeah, that is a bit more difficult for Dario Lilo. There's Riley Amos, yeah. would dearly love to do the double here today. Won the short track earlier on the weekend. Yeah, and Bjorn Riley, he's in front of him. No, it's uh, Braden Johnson. Johnson. Sorry, Br Braden Johnson, of course. Yeah, Riley's dropped back off this group. For the time being, Bjorn Riley, sixth place currently. By our screens in the booth. So it's Boishy, Woods, Johnson and Amos that lead the way here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. And you can see that gap back. It's chunky now, Bart. It is, it's, yeah. Adrian Brachy is pushing hard. 15 seconds back to Dario Lilo in fifth, the man we were just talking about. So, yeah, but what a race for Braden Johnson. You haven't seen him that much in the in the Europe, but he did a couple of races, but not everything. So he's more fresh to the end of the season. Yep, yeah, a serious gap. Look at Martin leading that. Then we have Jong Reilly. Alex Malacana from Brazil on 8th place, 19 seconds yeah, back. Top 10. Yep. Abby Patterson in there, his sister Sophie coming up later on this morning in the women's under 23 race yeah. see if she can recover some of that early season form yeah she's also struggling with her form at the moment Carter Woods takes a drink yeah there's a bit of time to relax for these riders on sections like this and now we're coming to the front again Carter Woods I always feel I have to caveat whenever you say that that relaxing and cross-country racing is a very I mean, different and thing and from and relaxing and anywhere still, else on earth and it's still slightly <laughs> uphill over here it's I mean this is a decent riders, climb this yeah, I wouldn't say it's decent. It's not that steep. <laughs> For you, it's not decent, right? We've been over this. Riders definitely, they will feel it in their legs, but the, the, the speed is still high. Riders can see each other also for a longer time, so it gives them also the opportunity to chase harder and coming back again to the front. It's uh, We're at a bit of altitude here as well, Bart. 1,400. Yeah, almost 1,500, I thought. And it's yeah, like like Lanzerheide, this elevation, and uh, yeah, I think riders, they will feel it. Yep, certainly you can feel it. I can feel it moving around, and it's... Uh, it's not like uh, Andorra, where, we, where the race no. is on 2,000. But still, Lanzerheide is pretty high. Yeah, it's also 1,500, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And riders have to be prepared for these conditions. We are three to four hours away from just about anything else here in Snowshoe. Beautifully remote part of the world. Surrounded by forest and only forest. <laughs> Snow forest shoot. and only forest. I tell you, whoever has got the franchise for that Starbucks coffee shop in the village <laughs> is making a fortune this week. There's a long queue every day again. <laughs> But as you can see, the race village here, absolutely superb. We had one of the most emotional days of downhill racing ever yesterday. Bart and I, uh, before we got on the plane to cross the Atlantic, we had a bit of back and forth about how Ireland had never won a UCI World Cup. We did that yesterday, we ticked it off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's like the Netherlands doing well in uh, I know, cross but, you, yes, but you, do, <laughs> you do very well week in, week out. That's the first ever yesterday. Carter Woods here turning the screw at the front. Boishy has to give chase. Yeah, if you get a chance. 
go and check out the highlights from the downhill yesterday. It was absolutely just downhill racing at its best with uh, a couple of youngsters. And also the fans here Excuse in the me. snowshoe, they always very enthusiastic for everyone, for all the riders. It doesn't matter if it's a US rider or from another country. Yeah, the crowd absolutely superb yesterday. And you see the field, the, the group is spread out immediately after that uh, short downhill. I think it's fair to say most of that crowd may well still be in bed after last night, but they will be back out they in force back. for the elites later on this afternoon. Absolutely rest assured of that. Woods then, a second up the road from Boishy, absolutely nothing in it. They are distancing Johnson and Amos. Yeah, the three US riders, Braden Johnson, Rayleigh Amos, Bjorn Rayleigh, they're doing well. Luca Martin in fifth, 15 seconds back with Bjorn Riley. Dario Lilo is further down the road in a race that he really needs to win and hope for some kind of misfortune for Adrian Boishy if he has any hopes of taking a title still. Yeah, in great shape the whole season. Such a strong right, ride, only second point, year in the 23. Come on, Adrian. Come on, boy. Adrian Boishy. Nice, Adrian. Another group of Look two, easy. small well gap. Riding Johnson and really Amos a little bit further off. Here they are, the chasing group. They can see each other on climbs like this for a long time. It's getting more steep. Ricardo Wood is riding it now. Adrian Brazil is following. Quite easy. Strong guy. Ricardo Woods riding for the Giants. Factory team. Over that rock garden, that hand built rock garden. Famous here in Snowshoe for all these riders. So, Boishy, if he can get the win today, that would be enough to lock up the UCI World Cup overall title. You can have a bit of a holiday in Canada next weekend and <laughs> enjoy La Beatrice. <laughs> La Beatrice. I heard they designed a new course. I don't know if La Beatrice is really? still in it. Even last year it wasn't in. It's got to be in it. But yeah, it must be, yeah. It must be in it because I, had, I was forced down it two years in a row during course previews and it was the scariest moment of my year every time. It is. Yeah, Monsen um, awaits these racers next weekend. My goodness, what a ferocious track that is. It's they, have, they have plenty of opportunities to design a nice track. The first time I rode it, they lost my cross-country bike on the plane, so I was on an enduro bike with big, sticky tires and loads of suspension and big brakes, and it was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, never mind on one of these skinny, tired cross-country bikes. Second time, got it done the cross country bike, but it was it was a lot of a lot of hi long history in Monson then actually. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I think they had a 30th anniversary some years ago already. And these modern cross country bikes so so good at descending and whenever you think about how terrifying that track is on them, I can't imagine it on a 26 inch wheel yeah, hardtail. It is. <laughs> and that's how they did it. <laughs> that's how we did it. These these uh, back in the days, some years ago. Well, these two distancing themselves from the chase impact. Now Adrian Boishy in the red and white behind Carter Woods. Man going for the title today. Carter Woods, though, going for another win. Yeah, yeah, full suspension bikes these days. Even 120 millimeter suspension is more common than 100 at the moment. Bigger tires, wider tires. Till 2.4 in cross country racing. And into that. Very technical descent, the longest descent here on this course. Let's see how rough it is and yeah. slippery still. Carter Woods did the double in Val de Sole Trentino. And they're in the year when the short track and the cross country overall. Sorry, it's cross country Olympic, excuse me. But Adrian Boishy really has been the pick of the litter this year. He's been absolutely superb, Bart, hasn't he, all season long? Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah, very strong, very strong rider, always there. Also the test event he did last week in uh, Paris. I mean, as an under-23 rider, he was competing with world's best many elite riders. And for, for France, it's, it's a hard 
It's a um, hard one. Um, choice. <laughs> and many people are quietly tipping that they've got two spots for that Olympic race, and maybe one of them might go to Adrian Boisy. Yeah, of course. Uh, Victor Koretsky now. Uh, quite. Yeah. Yes, you can't look past Koretsky. You can't stop winning, can you? But I mean, Jordan Saru. He was probably first to breakfast this morning, never mind <laughs> first in the bike race. But Jordan Saru, I mean, is, he's equal in strength and also able to win races. Yeah, Saru and Koretsky, they've come up the ranks together as juniors and young riders, and really now two of the very, very best. Koretsky, though, in absolutely irresistible form. And here we see that again. Carter Woods. Looking at it through there. What a track. Over these roots and rocks. With a little bit of mud in between. Big, big guy, Carter Woods, as well. He is. He's very powerful, strong. He is. This will suit him here today. And one of the things that has been remarkable over the last few days is the change in colour of the trees. Autumn it has arrived. So yeah, quick. it's incredible. Every isn't day it? is more and more, but so beautiful. We saw on the downhill yesterday. At first, I thought it was me, and then Cedric said it actually on air that all of a sudden there were lots of leaves on the track. There hadn't been all week. It just yeah. felt like autumn had just arrived here in Snowshoe. So let's see next week in uh, Montsenen if we see similar colouring of the trees. They say beautiful. it's even more. Yep, should be a beautiful, beautiful set of scenery. Quebec and Beaupre. These two still leading. Carter Woods and Adrian Brazzi, the French guy. Fighting for Trinity. Early in the race already. Yep, Brazzi and Woods, 13 seconds ahead of Riley Amos. Yeah, look back over his shoulder, Carter Woods. No, but nobody there. Nobody there. Again, yeah. Is this part of the, uh, this part of the brace part about sharing that workload, keeping the pace moving forward, or do you sort of yeah. sit in a wee bit? I think also to, to try to save some energy to, for the end of the race. I mean, you can see uh, they're not Going full speed, I still have something left. Boat, also Carla Woods, he's looking back, looking back over his shoulder. Nobody's coming, so why should he push so hard and doing the work? Especially on these parts of the course, you can have a little bit of draft from the rider in front of you, so you can save some more energy. We have seen Carter Woods this season as well come on very, very strong at the end of races. Not unlike Vlad Daskalu and the elites, he all of a sudden will just appear at the end of races and also very, very good at doing the old Sean Kelly of sitting in a group and not doing much work and then all of a sudden being yeah. full of energy towards the end of it. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, Adrian Brigier is similar. If it comes down to uh, a few fast laps, he's also able to do that. So, uh, yeah, that's exciting. What is your, um, you've obviously, you've, there's nobody more experienced in the sport bar. What is your read on how good Adrian Boisci is? Because to my I eyes, mean, it looks like he's got everything. Yeah, he's got everything. That's that's how it is. He has the, the perfect body, the, 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 the sizes, the strength, the skills that you need to have in mountain biking too. But I think he could be also a strong uh, road rider, uh, for example. It doesn't matter what kind of yeah. the cycling discipline it is, uh, he's, he's good in everything. It, it looks like me. Randy Amos. On his own. On his own in third. third place. So he's trying to catch the two in front. There is the gap on the road. So Amos needs to get himself yeah. across there. Rally, buddy, rally. He's riding himself into this race. Listen to the crowds in the woods. Rams turns of a man, the Dutch guy, the only Dutch rider in the under 23 men. Is he the only Dutchman out there? Yeah, in the under 23 category. Oh, in the under 23 category, okay. Actually, there's no man elite from the Netherlands, so the only Dutch <laughs> male rider. Yeah, you have got one fairly decent rider who yeah. was in Paris last weekend, wasn't it? But he's too busy with, with uh, so many road races he's all got, the time. He's got a bit of a busy calendar, Matthew van der Poel, hasn't he? Yeah, after winning that World Champs title on the road, yeah. He's invited at well, all the races. One-off, if you look at cycling as a whole, has to be one of the performances of the year. That men's road race title from yeah. Van Der Poel, when he crashed yeah, <laughs> and destroyed a shoe, <laughs> but still, still won it yeah, somehow. Yeah. So no excuses anymore. If a rider has some yeah. technical issues exactly. with a shoe or something, <laughs> no, you, you <laughs> no, he got it done. The best example, he gave it. 
just when he's on, there's yeah. no one in the world can touch him. Nope. And probably we'll see more of him next year in the World Cup. Yeah, disappointing. Well, races too. Disappointing at the World Championships. He had that crash on the start loop coming down towards the start finish straight in Glentress Forest and had to retire from that after so much talk about him being there and where he was being graded. But yeah, it would have been a shame to see. It would have been good to see what he could have yeah, delivered in that that's race. That's how it is. But uh, in the under 23 category, Tom Skellikus, he took the, the spot for the, the Netherlands for the Olympic Games. So uh, Mathieu van der Poel will uh, take that one next year in Paris. They're doing the Olympic Games. There is Riley Amos. Yeah, yeah. Riley Amos not that far off. It's still a little bit of work to do for him to close that gap. In third place. As we wait for the riders to head through this wood section. Yeah, they are actually on the, another part of the course. So if Adrian Boisci wins the day, he cannot be beaten in the UCI World Cup overall points, and he will be rewarded with that huge trophy in Mont Saint Anne next weekend. He, is, he has been very consistent all the time, Adrian Boisci. He's been up in the monks the whole time. Track, yeah, cross country races, everything. Yes, instead of some of the other young riders who won once in a while. And it's not that consistency as he uh, showed. It's maybe really cliché to say, Bart, but it is true, isn't it? You win titles on your bad days. Now they're slowing down. Yeah. No, you have to be very consistent. That's how it is. Work together. Come on, boys. Come, 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 come. Work together. <laughs> but I should they? I, I don't know if they will or not. Yeah, it's maybe wishful thinking that one. Yeah. They, they feel each other strength and not like to push too much that early in a race because it's still very early, these two. So Pwashi's worst and result it. this season was a 15th in Nova Mesto, Namarave. His second worst was an 11th in the short track in Snowshoe. Hey! Other than that, Go it's been top threes. That's the consistency yeah. of how he did it this year. On all different courses, different conditions. Six different wins. Handful of second places, couple of third places. That is just that consistency that has made him. And especially in the yeah, in the podium positions, you get the highest, uh, the most points. Yeah, when you look at Lilo, it's not a dissimilar set of results. Second place in the overall, but it's more about top fives and top threes. 650 points for Dario Lilo this season so far. 104, Adrian Boashi. Carter Woods is taking his gel. Riley Amos by our screens, 19 seconds back. Luca Martin, 35 seconds back. Braden Johnson, 39 seconds back. So these two look like they've just, that little effort on the last lap may have just broken the advances of Riley Amos slightly. Four more laps to go. Four to go. And you can see the leaders not giving everything. Carter Woods so strong yeah. up this climb. <laughs> Is this an attack? He took his gel. Yep, must be the serious energy. gel. Washi, that we've seen this from him as well, stays in the saddle for as long as possible. Never really up and it out of it like until, until he absolutely uh, needs to be. He's not stressed at all. No. Even when Carter Woods was pushing quite hard, accelerating. Carter Woods checks over his shoulder, just checks up his speed slightly. And here we see that again. Will this just he be... He just uh, took his gel. Will this just be to try and put a dent in Riley Amos part, just to... Oh, sorry, excuse me, Adrian Boisier. Will it just be to try and sort of... It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> just try to follow you anyway. Just try to land a punch, yeah. <laughs> it seems to be like that, or not? Yeah, it's... And if you see Carter Woods again, uh, he's taking a lot of drinks, even cooling himself down at the moment. It's interesting, isn't it? Because sometimes we talk about the first under 23 race of the day gets the best track conditions if it's a very, very hot track or uh, location we're at. But today, I'd say probably the trickiest conditions will be out there. Yeah, the I mean, the moisture from the, the night on the course makes it very slippery, these descents. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was actually, I thought it was quite cool this morning at the start. It 
seems to be that it uh, warms up very quickly. Riley Amos is now 25 seconds back behind and these two, so they've put some these, time into him. How these guys jumping over these rocks and roots. Great shot from the drone as it, follow, it tries to follow them through there. <laughs> it's the, not easy, I think, with all these trees. It's not easy. It gets to cut this corner, though, in fairness. <laughs> yeah, and it goes further down. It's a lovely little descent, this yeah, to ride. But this, this is the hardest part. That's the top of the descent, this long descent. The most difficult part. In slow motion. And you can see also how the bike is working, the suspension is doing its job, different lines here. Actually, that that gap in between these trees, it's very narrow. It's not much space at all to no. maneuver. You mightn't get a Carter Woods through there. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe his got handlebars little... too wide. <laughs> yeah, big wide bars on cross-country race bikes these days. Yes, 76, it's a bit standard almost these days. For the women, a bit smaller. Yeah, I mean, the cockpit, if you're talking about your handlebar, the cockpit, it's, it's something very personal and uh, yeah, very... has to be very precisely in very details. And, and it's it's all automatically how they're working with their hands and their fingers cross shifting. Cross-country cross racers, will it be the same as... I know a lot of the downhillers, obviously, they've all got professional mechanics, but a lot of them insist that they will set the bars up. They'll set where the levers are, where the gear shifter is, because... It's yeah, so you, personal. And it's very personal. Yes. Also, the, yeah, every angle of the levers or the yeah, the, the dropper seat post, yeah. the, the gears. I remember talking to uh, former UCI world champion Reese Wilson about it, and he said that he has to do it himself, even though he knows that it's probably different every time he does it. <laughs> but he has Espe to do it himself. Especially if you have to pack your bike for flying, I mean, in your yeah. bike bag. It always is very slightly. slightly different afterwards. <laughs> even if you measure it precisely till the, the, the smallest detail, it's, it's never the same. I was going to ask you about your handlebar setup. I read an interview actually with yourself in a US magazine earlier on this week. Did you have extensions on your brake levers for the bull bars? Yeah, yeah, very back in the days I had, <laughs> yes. That, but back in the days we were riding with bar ends, yeah. so it means like little horns actually yeah. on, the, on the top of your, up, up at the end of your handlebar. And then you could, you could, yeah, uh, stay on your bar ends yeah. and then still shifting. Uh, wow. Oh, uh, braking, still braking, brake. braking. I just I clocked the photo off it and looked like there was a little extension on it and I was like, what's that for? And then I saw the I saw the bar ends and I thought, oh, he's breaking on the bar ends. It's it's like uh, yeah, if you have a drop bar and you're riding on your brake leaf or your your, your mm -hmm. yeah. on the hoods. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's similar. Well, bit, bit different. Then we don't see many bar ends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Some of the enduro racers actually they run a, um, a bar end that's to protect the the pinky finger. It just ah. comes out slightly, and it's just to protect it if you punch a tree, which can enduro imagine, yes. bikes you yeah, can do quite yeah. often. There is Braden Johnson on screen now. On his own. So Johnson seventh at the minute behind Luca Martani just came through the shot. And Dario there Lilo. is Dario Lillo. So Dario Lillo who really, really needs to beat Adrian Boashi today, is down in eighth position at the head of this gaggle of riders. He wants to be towards the front of this if he's to have any chance of controlling his own destiny in terms of the, the title fight, but Carter Woods is currently the man tasked with putting the pain on Adrian Boashi. Yeah, he's testing him out. And he's there still, Adrian Boashi. It doesn't work so far. Look at the legs on Carter Woods. What a big, powerful yeah. rider. There's Riley Amos. The winner from the short track last Thursday. Yep. Amos, that win meant so, so much to him. He's won already this season, but my, he celebrated that one. Yeah, Andorra, he won cross country. And now the short track here in Snowshoe, USA. Well, uh, Evie Richards won the short track, the elite women's short track, and she immediately credited Riley's win. She said that whenever somebody wins in a team, they're all it, that close, it, is, it can yeah. lift them. Yeah, it is. If the, the, the team spirit is good, it helps each other, it helps everyone in the team. There but is. also the, the, the mechanics, uh, the masseurs, everyone. Riley Amos, so he's found a second back on them. 24 seconds now the difference. Yeah, on this uh, climb, the riders again can see each other for a long time. I think uh, Carter Woods is pushing hard most of the time. He was so quick in that interview we did with Riley Amos to point out the importance of NICA, the uh, high school racing league, 
for cross country here in the States and how it is bringing so many young riders forward through yeah, a like, pathway. Yeah, like Ryden Johnson is one yeah. of these young uh, US riders. It's important that you have a good national series. Johnson up in the fifth currently. Fifth, but he is now one minute and seven seconds behind Carter Woods at the front of this one. Yeah, so these guys are pushing hard, these two. <laughs> yep. Dario Lilo now in fifth place. Luca Marte fourth. One minute ten back for the Swiss rider. If Boashi gets the win today, he does take the overall title. If he doesn't, we might have to wait the Mont Saint Anne to award that one. But a commanding lead in the points. Yeah, to beat Adrian Brashi isn't not e it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. No. I wouldn't like to be the person charged with that one. That <laughs> feels quite complicated. Yeah, they both like to win races like these. Yeah, we get that other camera angle of that descent where you can see how choppy it is. Loanne Lecomte on a hardtail yes. bike for this down there, yeah, Bart. She, she was on the hardtail bike last Friday in the short track and she has to ride the same bike in uh, cross country. Feels like a dicey decision. But I think uh, what's in her mind is the Olympic Games next year, Paris. And maybe that's more like, a, I would say, especially for the women, a uh, hardtail bike course. Well, we have and I think with that in mind, she's riding only hardtail bike from now on. Maybe. Well, we have seen Pauline Ferran Bravo on the hardtail quite a lot this season. Yeah, I think that's the example. She won uh, Worlds on a hardtail bike, and the winner always. Yeah, that's right. I think genuine, <laughs> generally, if Pauline's doing it, it's probably <laughs> quite well advised. Pauline Frampereau not here, actually. Not and here. No shoe. She was never going to be here, though. She was always scheduled to do the Gravel Worlds, wasn't she? And yeah, then, that's um, next week. Yeah. She was planning to do uh, Gravel Europeans, which is today as well, in Belgium. 27 seconds back for Amos now. Unfortunately, suffering with COVID. Pauline, if you are watching, hope you feel better soon and you're back with us. But, um, yeah, absolutely superb in 2023, Pauline Ferran Prevu. Yeah, like she was last year too. And the year before that, and the year before <laughs> that. Third place at the minute, Riley Amos. And probably next year again. There's Luca Martin, yeah, exactly, there's Luca Martin. Fourth at the minute, 59 seconds back off the leader, Boishy. Yeah, riding himself into the race, Luca Martin. Really, really aggressive rider, isn't he? Just he is always technically attacking. very skilled. And there is Braden Johnson. He dropped back a little bit. Stop him pedaling there. Yeah, Dario, Dario Lilo. Lilo. At the head of this train of riders, including Gutierrez Prieto, Lom, Malacarne, Barroso Gomez. Yeah, Alex Braden, Malacana from Brazil. I'm just looking at our screens here. Braden Johnson down to 10th now, so I wonder if there's an issue somewhere. Yeah, must be, I think. Yeah, he's a young rider. Maybe he blew up in the beginning of the race. Uh, yeah. If you have your uh, front row start, of course you like to follow the, the leaders. And as a young guy, you, bl you can blow up very quickly. Bart, you've managed a lot of the world's fastest young riders. How difficult is it to bottle, like to just keep the stoppers on that enthusiasm slightly? It, it's almost impossible. They have to experience <laughs> these things. I mean, short track is still okay. That's only 20 minutes yeah, race. So they can go they, as hard as they want. Yeah, they can handle it, but this is one and a half hour race. So there's, there's more involved. On the lap uh, four then. And you saw him, uh, yeah, having a good start. Was in the top five for uh, a long time, but now dropping back a little bit, uh, Braden Johnson. Yeah, he's still in 10th at the it's minute. Still, it's still good, one minute 20 back. Yeah, not, he's, not got 20, he's got a 20 second buffer to uh, Gustav Heavy Patterson, so hopefully there is nothing mechanical going on. Wonder where he's from. <laughs> Carl Woods leads the way. That's how the fans are dressed here in Snowshoe. Yeah, a sea really? of stars and stripes yesterday for the downhill, and I'm sure they'll all be maybe getting a couple of cups of coffee in and a bit of a slower morning this morning, then I'd say they'll all be out in force for the elite races later on today. Really, Amos 
He came back another three seconds. 24 on the third place now. We maybe just haven't seen it, Bart, but I sort of feel like I've seen Carter Woods drinking a lot more than Adrian Boishy so far. It's true, yeah. yeah. Actually, oh. it's, that's smart. Now, it really, uh, Adrian Boishy does. Yeah. 24 seconds. Well, Carter Woods got a, a big engine to keep the coolant in. Yeah, it's true. If you are a bigger, taller guy, you have to drink a li little bit more. Boisier, as you say, though, physically pretty much the perfect build for a cross-country rider. Yeah, I mean, tall, but not too tall. If you are too tall, it, it, the descents are more difficult. Yeah. This. Bike fit can be tricky as well for the bigger guys as well, can't yeah, it? Yeah, but a, a, a drop of seat pose these days helps a lot for these taller guys. Mm -hmm. Luca Martin. There is a dropper seat post on the bike of Luca Martin. That's number four in the race. So Martin currently 58 seconds back off our leader. Riley Amos is 27 seconds back off him in third place currently. As they come through the Red Bull roots and roll section. The Kenyan rider Gutierrez from uh, Mexico. Doing well, fifth place now. You can hear those bikes hooking up beautifully around that corner. Both of them managing their braking absolutely perfectly. No locked up wheels, keeping the tires gripping and rolling the whole time. And now Boishy goes past Carter Woods on the climb. Yeah, and that's the long climb. Immediately taking the lead. The spatial awareness of these cross-country riders is so good, Bart. You just saw there, just a flick of the bars went past yeah. him, cut in an inch off his front wheel. And they feel exactly where they have to be in front. We saw that also in the previous laps, that Adrian Brzee, most of the time on these sections, he likes to lead and doesn't do too much work on the more sections where you can have a little bit of draft or relax. Will that just be a personal thing? Will that just be that he likes that section of track? He wants to be in front. Yeah, and it, uh, maybe also because if if um, Carter Wood is making a mistake in front of him, yet, yeah, then he knows as well that he lost a lot of time. And maybe he feels stronger on the part like this and testing each other all the time. Woods then. Locked on the back of Adrian Boishy. If Boishy wins today, he has an unassailable lead in the UCI World Cup overall standings as we head to the last round next weekend in Mont Saint Anne. Job done. The two leaders. You hear the voice of uh, Leah Davidson over the uh, event PA. Great to see her back in the yeah. races. Leah Davidson. They are really, really distancing, distancing themselves, excuse me now, this pair. Yeah, the gap about uh, 30 seconds most of the time. I mean, really Amos on third place. Yeah. Not that far off, but the gap is dear. But if he wants to get across, he's gonna ha if he's gonna want to get across and then have enough time to recover and attack on the last lap, then kind of needs to get across that now. 24 seconds to send back to Amos, so it is steady. He is traveling at the same pace as these yeah. two. But that's a big chunk of time to claw back. He might ride himself into the race. But then these riders, they have to slow down definitely. And that's not what they're going to do. You see different positions all the time. Adrian Brasi and then we see Carter Woods leading again. So they're working well together. Well, news just in from Josh Carlson down in the pits. Sam Gaze is pulling out of the rest of the season. His team and doctors have made the decision to withdraw him from the next two rounds, end his season early in order to try and get him to recover. Yeah, he wasn't that strong in the short track last Friday. But it was good that we saw him riding here, but probably he's not on his best after that illness he had in the Vuelta. Where we became sick after the first few days. Yeah, had a lot you, of you feel for him. He's fought on so many different fronts this season, hasn't he? That it's just and once a bit of illness creeps in. Yeah, and if you don't have the right form and you need to have the right form for a good performance, then it maybe it costs too much energy for his body as well. And uh, 
team staff decided, the team doctor decided not to start anymore and, and take his rest for the rest of the season. Bar, it's, it's one of those things that I think that if, you know, if you're a fan at home watching, it can feel, you know, it can feel quite convoluted and sort of not that impressive. But this whole, the whole UCI World Cup and all the road races, and it's a traveling village, isn't it? It travels all around the world. You're on and off planes all the time. Airports with the best, with the best will in the world are dirty, dirty places. And it's so easy to just pick up an illness. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. But I think he, he, he picked up his illness in the rainy stages in the beginning of the Vuelta. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always a lot of yeah, dirty uh, stuff on, on the road. And you, if, if it's raining, yeah, you get a lot on your body, in your mouth, if you have to suffer. And I think yeah, something he took over there. And that's why he became sick, and it took him a while to recover of that, and still it seems to be that he's not recovered well, completely Riley, of it. Riley Amos is flying two seconds, so the third place is clawing his way back towards the front two, which remain Carter Woods and Adrian Boisier, there's Luca Martin. Yeah, and Dario Lilo behind him. Or is it? Where is Dario Lilo? No, Lilo is in 17th oh, by our time screens back. in the booth, two minutes 12 back. He so must have had a technical problem. Must be some kind of issue for Lilo, you feel. There is Braden Johnson, who's in ninth currently, so he's steady the ship. There's Bjorn Riley behind him in tenth. Gustav Heavy Peterson behind him. Good showing from Bjorn, another good showing from Bjorn Riley this year, actually. I just wonder what's happened to Lilo. Yeah, he must have had a technical problem because he was around the fifth place, sixth place most of the time. Doing really well. Marte. Ross Lambert from France, number 23. John Rayleigh and I'm Braden Johnson. Fitona from Italy with the number there 11. is the number two in the overall, Dario Lilo. Not going his way today, Lilo. But he lost too much in uh, such a short time. And he's still doing quite okay right now. Lilo 18th currently, so he's lost another position, so moving backwards. I just wonder, Bart, if we maybe see him in the tech feed zone. Bjorn Rayleigh now on 10th place. Alex Malakan on 7th, the Brazilian, Brazilian rider. Gustav Peterson 11th. That steep, slippery descent. Carter Woods with Adrian Brasi. No problems for these riders. Look at them just skipping through that really, really choppy section. Great shot. You can see the rear shock there tapping away. Carter Woods, mouth open, getting a bit of air in. Washi. Close on this wheel. And how frustrating is that, Bart? Whenever you're pushing so hard <laughs> and the guy behind you is going nowhere. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what they do the most of the time, testing each other and you're testing each other all the time. Even you, you might have the intention that the, one of them is maybe more exhausted at the end of the race, but then they're slowing down again to and recover again. And that, that's how racing is. And you will try and test each other as well on, on many different places on the course too. So try the descents, try the uphills and the more technical parts. We're coming to the rock section. We've talked about this a lot this season already, haven't we? That cross-country racing is such an endurance sport. You have to be so, so fit to be, uh, to be able to compete. But you also have to be fit enough to allow your brain the oxygen to still be able to think tactically and to look at the other rider and see where they're making mistakes, see where they're going yeah, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not that much in between these two today. No, absolutely <laughs> nothing between them. <laughs> no, that's how it is. Two of the stars of the sport for but years we, but to we, come. We're not really having seen an attack of one of these. It's, they're testing each other out, but it's not. They still have a little bit left. Both. Two more laps from now on. It's getting more interesting. It is about to get lively <laughs> here it's not in Snowshoe, West Virginia. Not that much time left. Two to go. Carter Woods leads the way ahead of Adrian Boisci. Yeah, lap times around uh, 11 minutes. Yeah, fast laps. 
quite a high average speed round here actually compared to some of the tracks we go to as well. It is, yeah. The one big climb we have here on the steep, but yeah, all the other parts are quite on high speeds. So current fastest lap times, woods, woods, boishy, woods, woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. That's why they are leading. Yep, tells you everything you need to know. Riley Amos, our screen. Yep, 31 seconds back now. So, well, might be settling in for a podium. Amos. That gap was 23 seconds at the end of the last lap. So, yeah, the Mexican rider. Yep. Adair Gutierrez now on fourth. Good, good ride from him. Yeah. So he's come to the front of that group for the Canyon Collective. Boishy into the feed zone. There is Riley Amos having a lonely race to himself. That's the third place. How important, Bart, uh, whenever you're isolated like that, does the, the role of the team become to let you know the time gaps and what's around you? And Yeah, he knows as well, and he can see the riders on a couple of times on the course. Uh, 31 seconds now, but of course, yeah, the team, they inform him as well exactly how much the gap is. So but also he can see it by himself. Just to give you an update on what's happened to Dario Lilo then, he's still 17th, two minutes 23 back off the leader, the number two in the overall at the minute for Switzerland. If Boishy, and it's a big if, can get past Carter Woods to take the win, that would net him an unassailable lead in the points with one round to go. Willie Amos into the technical descent, but it is Carter Woods. I was about to say, where's Boishy there? That's the yeah, most yeah. distance we've seen between the two of these guys for five laps or so. Just the bike length in a very fast descent, a technical descent too. Nothing in between these two. And then it goes up immediately again from the bottom. The longest climb of this course. Probably we will see Adrian Brachy again overtaking. There, and and exactly it again. the same spot. Yeah. Cat and mouse all day long between these two, except I think they're both the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting to see this. Course looking really, really good though, Bart. Yeah, but it's still slippery, especially this climb over here. I mean, the, the roots are wet, and actually, actually the soil is also, it, it's like a moisturing. It, it, comes, up, it comes up from it, And here you it? see it, how slippery it is over these rocks and roots. You see this, they're sliding away. And that is and what... It, and the, the tiles are full of mud, actually, too. Yeah, that could be a real difficulty. You see these sections over here, they're still wet and still muddy. Here was a little bit of off camber, some roots in it too. And then it's more dry again. It's one of the really, really difficult things when it comes to tire technology is to get the tire to clear, yep. to actually That's clear the itself of these mud. Otherwise, you just end up riding around in two big yeah. mud circles. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah, the, the knobs in between, the distance in between the knobs of a mud tire is yeah. much wider than a, like a good rolling uh, fast tire is. I love a mud tire. Love a mud tire. <laughs> I can't, don't. Can't look past them. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I like the slick tires. Like yeah. <laughs> That's good. Like, slick tires means you're, you're too hot. You're too warm. A mud tire. It's nice and wet. It's cold. You've got a jacket on. Lovely. Just Comfortable. Boishy out front. It's the head of Carter Woods. Yeah, not that much in between these two still when it comes down to the final of this race. Rayleigh Amos on his own, the track factory rider from the USA. Third place, Adair Gutierrez from Mexico on fourth. Riley Amos nosing that track through the woods. De Oof. <laughs> you could see on the yeah. face there that that nearly, <laughs> nearly went very, very wrong for Riley Amos, but handled it well. And that's mountain biking. That's this, Gutierrez. That's, here this. There's Gutierrez, so he's broken free now. Gutierrez is just 30 seconds behind Riley Amos. Fourth place. 
that is my, that's descending on a mountain bike in on a mountain bike in one shot. You've just got to be comfortable with both axles doing something different, breaking free of grip, and just keep the bike moving. Sometimes it feels it feels like like surfing to me. How how they're riding these descent and with sliding away with the bikes to left right all the time. And st stay and staying on the bike, it's, it's yeah, really impressive to see. We saw it yesterday in the the downhill, just big, big rocky course here in snowshoe, and riders just having to take so many risks. And part of it is just moving fast enough so that by the time a wheel is let go of grip, it's on to the next thing, <laughs> and it can find some again. But winner looking like it's going to come between, going to come from one of these two. Washi. Closing in on the overall title, Carter Woods just wants to get back on that top step. Woods third in the overall. Actually very, very close to Lilo in the points as well, so Carter so, Woods... yeah, he might overtake uh, Dario Lilo with the results as they are right now. There's Riley Amos on the number four bike for Trek Factory Racing. Himself fourth in the overall, so Dario Lilo could be about to free fall down the standings here, unless he can right the ship somehow, but it's getting late in the day for that crack. 15 plays now for Dario Lilo. Two minutes, 34. So he has, he has brought it back a couple yeah. of spots. He was 17th last lap, two minutes, 34. There is Gutierrez Prieto. Here we have uh, four names of him, uh, Gutierrez, Prieto, Sadil, Adir. Easy for you to say. <laughs> there he is through the roots though, absolutely superb, the Mexican. I can't imagine there's too many slick descents like this. Very technical section over here. Where he's grown up riding. Gutierrez, no problem for him. But that's the thing about the UCI World Cup bar, you've got to be good on every track in every set of conditions yeah, if you want to win a is, title. Yeah. It seems to be for these young guys, no problems at all. Luca Martin is in ninth now behind this fast moving pack that the Mexican has broken free from. Alex Malacane is leading here now, now, now on third place of this uh, Jason group. Bjorn Rayleigh is leading this group. We have Maxime Lom, he's second of that Jason group. Bjorn Riley in fifth then, last spot on the podium currently for the American. Seventh in the overall for Riley as it stands. Before today's race, of course. Maxime Lom, there is Bjorn Riley. Yep, the competition for that fifth spot last in the podium really heating up now. Apologies, three on the podium in cross country. I'm still in down. Under 23. I'm no, under 23. Five in elite. Sorry, boy. It was a very long day yesterday at the time. <laughs> and it's early day today. <laughs> for early day today, yeah, I managed to avoid the Irish after party last night because so that would have not have helped us at all today. The under 23 categories have three, po three on the podium and the elite five. Well, with one race to go, I'm glad I got that one field down. There are some of the stars and stripes. Fans, as I say, starting to surface after a rowdy night here in Snowshoe. And nothing in between these two. Absolutely nothing between the two of them. Washi Woods have been the class of the field. It's slowing down again. 36 seconds to Rayleigh Amos, lead they have. You just heard a bit of information from the team there, more than 30 seconds. But it wouldn't take that long anymore. And is this part, at this stage in the race, do you know where you're going to attack? Do you know where it's going to, the killer blows going to come from? Yeah, they, they sometimes they, they do it also on feeling what's just coming up in, in, in that, but also they have in mind exactly where they will do it. But yeah, sometimes you have to adapt. Make it, up as you go, make it up as you go along a little bit sometimes. And <laughs> you can see Carter Woods having to race. really tap out a fast cadence there to stay with Washi. I just wonder if Washi's turning the screw slightly now. Probably this is not the best 
section of the course to make an attack. It's time to recover again on this, this part where they are right now, slightly down, a lot of speed. We have seen him go early, Boishi, at times and surprise people this season as well. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, yeah. he doesn't wait to the yeah. death, he goes very early. A bit like Lucas Schwarzbar in that respect. Has the ability to be creative when it comes to his attacks. There's Riley Amos, roared on by the home fans. Nice shot. Here they come. Here they come, leaders. Boishi has, like a, a, has a good plus. look at Carter Woods there. <laughs> yeah, it's an opportunity for Rayleigh really. Amos actually to come back, but I don't know if it's time enough. 34 seconds now. What a ride from this man, though. Gutierrez Prieto has broken free of that group, but he was at the back off for a while. So difficult to do, Bart, in this sport, to, to get out of a big group of riders and stay away. Yeah, it is. He did it. But it is going to come down to these two we, as we trip past the R mark on the last lap. The speed goes up. Carter Woods, Adrian Boishy, don't go anywhere. You've got ringside seats. 30 seconds now for Rayleigh Amos in third place. Right, Bart, gaze into your crystal ball. How do you see this one unfurling over this lap? I think uh, Adrian Boishy. Okay, he, he, he looks stronger to me. He looks stronger to me when it comes down to a sprint. But of course, Carter Woods, great shape he is. Bjorn Riley there in fifth place at the front of that group. Here with Maxim Lom from Switzerland behind him, teammates of uh, Dario Lillo. I find Carter Woods though so hard. And there is she, she here, the Adrian Brigitte. Digging now. Digging deep. Yeah, Carter Woods knows. Carter Woods has got the email he though. He accelerates well. He saw that move from Boishi and pulls back out in front of him. Yeah. This, yeah. This is important, these positions over here right now. Is that, is that See, frowned upon, Bart, attacking when someone else is in the tech feed zone? Or? <laughs> I mean, it's under 23 cross country race and they'll do anything, but. Nah, I mean, it was not. I think he didn't go into that tech feed zone for uh, feed, actually. I, I don't think he took anything. He didn't have time. No, he really didn't have time. That, that's true. That, that's true. But riders can choose both lines, even if they don't take any support, technical support or feed. So, so sometimes they feel that the, the, the tech feed zone, it's a bit faster even. Riley Amos is in third place behind these two for the USA. But, but the winner is going to come from this battle that you're watching now. But you could see that uh, Carla Woods definitely likes to be in that first place when it comes down to that technical descent where the riders are right now. But I'm wondering what Adrian Brigitte will do now if it goes up again. Be and interesting to see if he gets past him on that same yep, left-hander that yep. he does every lap. That's or if brilliant. Carter Woods closes the door and says, nah, I'm all right, thanks out front. Now it's my time. Here we go. Let's see if the Frenchman moves past him. There he goes. There he goes. Yeah. Yeah. He does it again. Carter Woods not too worried. Not at all. No, it's true. But you have to be careful now. He can just find a different gear sometimes, Boishi, and just attack on climbs in funny places and... He, he's like Nino Short a little bit. Yeah, it's very, very he, similar he, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does that sometimes too. He you can attack pretty much <laughs> anywhere on course. <laughs> but you don't expect the move, he does it. Similar to Scherter as well, he, he enjoys making things hard for the people around him. Yeah, mate. Ah, he's slow. <laughs> Did you see that? The little he, bobble there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just slowed down. Made it hard for the rider following to keep forward momentum. Boishi now, now he's pushing on that steep part. Now he pushes on Boishi. Are we going to see him out in the saddle here? Yeah, now he does there it for he the goes. first time. Oh, Carter Woods is strong too. Poof, Carter Woods having absolutely none of that attack whatsoever. And then look back over his shoulder, Adrian Brasier, but Carter Woods is there. Do you know what, Bart? I think we're going to be talking about this battle for a lot of years to come. These mm -hmm. two really are class, class acts. Carter yeah. Woods going for a win, but also looking to leapfrog Dario Lilo in the overall. Adrian Boishi, if it stays the way it is at the minute, will take that UCI World Cup overall crown with one to go. Yeah, and the hardest part of the course they have done now, from, the, from here on, it's more fast, it's more flat, not that much, and steep climbing anymore, so positioning 
that's most of the important things. Now you see as well, slowing down again. Adrian Bussi wouldn't like to do the work here on these sections. Try to save some energy. But also Carter Woods doesn't like to work. He boxes clever, doesn't he? He just sort of just sits in tight. Let's the other rider put a bit of effort in. This last drink for the race. That, do you know what? Physicality aside, as we see this overtake again, Bar, I think that is what separates these two really from the rest of the pack is that they're they have not only powerful, but they're very, very clever with what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, they're real racers. They know exactly it's not only the power, but also you have to be smart. Tactics. Gutierrez Prieto in fourth for the Canyon Collective. Mexican rider. Canyon, one of the most successful brands in this year's UCI World Cup already. Having a great season across all different formats. There's Riley Amos in third. Lonely old race for Riley, but he'll be happy with that podium spot in front of the US crowd, I'm sure. Yes, still a strong you ride. See how fight. fast he's pushing on down there. Amos, 27 seconds back off the rear of Carter Woods. So, so from here on, it goes slightly up again for these two. Farthest points away from the finish line. And then it comes back to the center of Snowshoe. Boashi, yeah. ominous, ominous behind Carter Woods as they head into the second tech zone. The last time they'll be through here. And there, and there it goes. It goes. Adrian Boashi lights the blue touch paper. Carter Woods slightly slow to respond to it. Maybe give him a bike length, but look at the big Canadian. Ah, but on this, these parts, I think Carter Woods can't follow him. him. It's not, it's not that steep. There's more daylight. Is, there's it, more it, daylight between them than there's been, but Woods is right on the back of him again. This is a technical part with some roots and rocks, uh, some roots in it too, a lot of trees, single track, very bumpy. But Woods is very strong too. He's just reeled them back in there yeah, straight yeah, yeah. away. But on these sections, th these are not too steep. And Carter Woods, he's more, uh, he's more powerful. I think Adrian was he. He's more punchy, steeper climbs, maybe a little bit of a stronger climb. He's passed him again. Yeah, Woods yeah, now yeah. back in the lead. Boashi all of a sudden has to close a gap of a couple of bike lengths. This one's been fascinating, start to finish. This is interesting. Woods looks over the shoulder, sees that there's a little gap there. The gap is there. Yeah, Adrian Brasi is suffering. And that's not very often you get to use that sentence. Washi in a bit of trouble here. Just a few seconds. Carter Woods. But you can see the body language of Adrian Boishy. Carter Woods has Adrian Boishy on the ropes here. And he needs to land that knockout punch. That's still, a, I wouldn't say a long way, but as, as soon as they go under the bridge and then left turn, that steep, punchy descent. Carter Woods leading here. Fast yeah. through there, Woods. The gap is there. Yeah, the gap is there for Carter Woods. Adrian Brosi second now. A few seconds off only. Four seconds. Four seconds, and that's as much time as there has been between these two Titans of under 23 cross country racing. All race long. Amos, 42 seconds back. Gutierrez Prieto, one minute three. Bjorn Riley, one minute 40 at the head of that train of riders. So, Adrian Boishy, Bart, not yeah, looking great here. Not looking good at all. No. Carter Woods has the tongue out again. <laughs> He's looking strong. Oh. Boishy, you can always, you know, when he's working, the head starts to move a little bit. And here we see that again. That steep, slippery descent. The most, the last, most difficult part of the course. No problems at all for Carter Woods. Absolutely none. Come on, Adrian! Adrian Boishy getting roared on by the team. Come on, Carter Come on. Woods, puff of the cheeks, shake of the head. Yeah, coming to the highest point of the course, just before the Rock Garden, and from there on... Look at the gap. He will make it. This is job done, I think, Bar. He will make it. 
Carter Woods has detonated at the front of this race, and it's 11 seconds back to Adrian Boishe. What a show of strength from the Canadian bar. Ah, but look at Carter Woods, how hard he's pushing here. He knows as well. Woods punches the air. That is confidence on the way into the rock section. He knows that his man is on the canvas. What a perf what a last lap from Carter Woods. Impressive. Yeah, he has the power. Absolutely in waves. Carter Woods has the power. What a performance. Just one corner to go then. Adrian Boishe will have to wait to Canada for that overall title. But this man, the Canadian, Carter Woods, has been a class act start to finish today. Carter Woods wins in snowshoe West Virginia, round seven of the UCI World Cup Cross Country Olympic under 23 men's race. And what a superb performance, pillar to post for Carter Woods. Boishe rolls across the line, dejectedly in second. He was there, there, bouts for you. But he couldn't match this man in the second half of the last lap, Carter Woods. Another victory in 2023. Here comes Riley Amos, though. Would have been hoping for more today, but third place on the podium. It's a podium for him, Riley Amos. So the title remains theoretically undecided, at least, until next time out in Monsignan. Riley Amos for Trek Factory Racing, shrug of the shoulders, but third place in front of a home crowd after the win in the short track. A good weekend for him at a all. Good weekend. I think he would have taken that probably at the start of the week. Yeah, yeah. A winning short track and a third place in the cross country. We talked about Boishe and Woods being the class of the field, but Amos really coming of age as well towards the second half of this 2023 season. Yeah. He is. He does. Feels like he's tamed a bit of that wildness from earlier in the year and it's harnessed into forward momentum as yeah, behind him. Gutierrez from Mexico on fourth place. Gutierrez Prieto. Great result from him. Best result of the season. Canyon Collective, what a year they are having across all the different cross country formats. Carter Woods, though, the biggest smile belongs to the big man. Fifth place. For Trek Future Racing's Bjorn Riley. Good result from him. Lom, the Swiss rider, punch in the air. Yeah, Maxim Lom from Switzerland. And then Get, Alex Malakarne. Getting the better, but getting the better of Malakarne. The Brazilian. Yeah, some new games in the top ten. Yep. We are going to say, as Barroso Gomez, we're going to say goodbye to one of, if not the most famous Brazilian in cross country racing later on today. Enrique Amancini, set to retire. Luca Martin. Luca Martin, 2.27 back. Just in the top 10. Yep. Another French rider Mantis coming Quay. into the top ten. Manisque Wine rounds out the top ten then, as there's a bit of a sprint finish behind him. Dario Lilo, 11th place. There's Dario Lilo. Well, he needed to beat Boishe today Paul in order Shell. to have a chance of winning that overall, but it wasn't to be. Lilo home in 11th. Really hasn't looked the same in the second half of this season. Grolombert, Crayer, Vittoni. There's Carter Woods, so though. That is really, that was really the fi the finishing blow, wasn't what, it, Bart? What, what a line. race he had today. I thought they were quite equal, but he was so much stronger at the end. Well, we can hear from Carter now. Let's head down there. Everything was...
Okay. Carter, congratulations. You just said to your team, everything was so good. It just all kind of came together for you today. With that result, how pleased are you? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be happier. Um, I think everything went perfect right from the gun. I had a great start, took the whole shot. Um, and this track is, if you can get a group of two or three out front, you can sort of keep that gap the whole race. And that's sort of what Adrian and I, uh, I was trying to do. I was sort of pushing it on the flats to try and hold our gap. Um, and then it was going to come down to a battle on the last lap, and it sure did. Where did you find that? Where did you have to go to get round that last lap? Because that was particularly impressive. Yeah, we were sort of taking turns on the same part of the track every lap, so we sort of continued that uh, for the first half. Um, and then I wanted to let Adrian attack first, so I could, I know he's got a good kick, so I wanted to sort of wear him down a little bit. And I just held on to his full gas attack, and as soon as he let up, I, uh, I went around and just attacked a little bit more, and that was it. And this gives you, I mean, it must give you a lot of confidence heading into a home run for you next weekend. Yeah, no, it's super, even even here, uh, yeah, listening to, there's a lot of people cheering my name, uh, and that's different than being in Europe for sure. So, uh, yeah, no, it was great atmosphere. Um, and, yeah, looking forward to seeing some family and uh, the Canadians next week. Well, we can't wait for that. Well done. Thank you. Well... Carter Woods can probably add 10 minutes onto every journey now for anywhere he needs to get around the pits for people who are going to be stopping him, wanting pictures taken with him. Big, what big race next weekend in Mont Saint-Anne for him. Yeah, but what a win here for him in uh, Snowshoe. Yes, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of confidence to travel to Canada. Do you think Mont Saint-Anne suits him as well as this place? I don't know the course yet, but uh, yeah, I think as a Canadian rider he will uh, perform good over there too. So it's Woods, Boishy, Amos, Gutierrez, Prieto, Riley, Lom, Malacarne, Barroso, Gomez, Martin and Gay. Riley Amos ended up 55 seconds back off the win, but that turn of pace in the last lap from Carter Woods would explain that one. Lilo in 11th, what could have been? Shell, Corlombert, Crayer, Vettone, Rose Trudler, Luke Vidman in 22nd, Owen Clark in 26th for Canada. Here are the highlights then. And it was all action right from the start of the seventh round of the UCI World Cup Cross Country Olympic for the under 23 men. Carter Woods in the blue jersey led them off the line. Bjorn Riley was in close contention as well for track future racing. The pace extremely high out in start loop. Riley Amos, the winner of the short track, took the lead. Yeah, just the field spread out immediately after the start. Uh, the positions were very important, but Carter Woods actually leading from start to finish, Adrian Brasier, he was uh, the only guy actually who could following uh, him. Uh, they tried testing each other out uh, a couple of times. Um. Yeah, the series overall leader, Boashi, on the number one bike in the red and white jersey, basically attached himself to Carter Woods in the blue. There was a group of four and then there was a group of two. And these two dominating the race here in Snowshoe for most of the time. Yeah, as we said, it was cat and mouse, but they were both the cat. And it came down to the last lap, they're testing each other a couple of times. Riley Amos had a relatively lonely race, but would be happy with his pace. He was travelling at the same velocity as the, the front two for most of them, just got distanced slightly. Luca Martin was a bit further back. And it came down. These two headed out onto the third lap. On this little turn, Boishy got past Woods every single lap, and he let him through. And then suddenly, we saw an attack. Yeah, the mental games that went on throughout the distance of this race between these two. There was an attack from Boishy on the last lap when Carter Woods turned in the tech feed zone. He saw it though, got it covered off. Boishy attacked again then up through the second tech zone. Woods though, lit the afterburners and then went straight back past him again. Let the top of the climb, a little fist pump because he knew that he was about to check out with another win in 2023 and set himself up perfectly for his home race in Mont Saint-Anne in Quebec next weekend. Carter Woods, 
Takes the win at the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup. Washi rolled across the line in second. Looks like he had burnt all the matches. Woods, though, set for a spot of celebrating later on this evening. Carter Woods then, Adrian Washi second. Then it was Amos, Gutierrez Prieto, Riley, Lom, Malacarne, Barroso Gomez, Luca Matin, Matis Gay, rounded out the top 10. We are gonna see that move here, I think. Well, we are actually gonna hear from Adrian Boishy, who's down there now. Adrian, huge congratulations. Brilliant result here in Snowshoe and a brilliant battle with Carter. What did you make of that? Yeah, I started on second row after my flat tire in the short track and then I made my way up to the front and I found myself with Carter. It was a really hard day. He pulled like on the flat every time and he was super hard pace. So I was trying to go in front in the climbs to push a harder pace because I know I'm a bit better climber maybe. And then he came down to last lap and I threw all my digs and then he just had one more left and yeah, I lacked a little bit of cast in the end to beat him, but overall I'm super happy with my race and everything included how he dealt with the jet lag and everything. And you were riding in particular for someone special today, weren't you? Yeah, it's my dad's birthday today, so je raise the anniversaire le zig. Congratulations on a great result. It's not a bad way to celebrate, is it? I normally do so with a, a card a couple of days late, but Adrian Boishy marching towards that overall title. What a delayed birthday present that one would be. Monse Ant, next weekend. Could be the place to score it. Will be the place to score it. Boishy today, second place. Absolutely superb ride. Attacked and attacked again, but it just wasn't enough to break the power of Carter Woods, the big Canadian. Here's Riley Amos. Riley, what a weekend you've had. First place in the short track and now third in the cross country. Not bad in front of the home fans. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great weekend for sure. Uh, starting with that short track win was just unbelievable. Like I can't explain the emotions of winning here in front of the the home crowd and just hearing so many people yelling for your name and for your country, it's like always an honor. And today I definitely hope to give a bit more of a show uh, fighting for the win, but had a great start and just got dropped early and was just kind of fighting steady the whole rest of the race. So I took a, a pretty big slam riding on Friday and the body's been really, really sore. Um, but I'm glad I honestly could put down a performance for the podium today. So I was a bit nervous, but yeah, it was it was great. The woods were really slippery and kind of playing to my advantage. I felt like I was having such a good time riding that and being able to put time on fourth place. And then just all the home crowd cheering me to the line. So thank you. Well done today. Thank you. Riley Amos would love to have gone a couple of spots better today, but as he said, Body's still feeling it after a big impact earlier in the week. A win the short track, followed by third place and a podium paying position in the cross country Olympic. More than good enough for his home round. Boishy leads Woods then by 160 points. Woods has leapfrog Dario Lilo in the overall after that disappointing result for Lilo today. Then it's Amos, Vidman, Marta, Riley, Malacarne, Gue, Vitone. So Boishy looking comfortable at the top, but he'll still require points from Mont Saint Anne to get the job done. Chelikins is 12th at the minute, ahead of Mario Bear. Hudima 14th, Cornillo 15th, Solvoy in 16th. Prayer and Gros Lambert, 18th and 19th respectively. Well, 
there is Snowshoe Village. Pocahontas County in West Virginia. Actually turning more autumnal, it feels like, by the hour. Two days ago, that was all green. What a stunning, stunning spot. Made even better by the fact that there is an extremely fast and extremely entertaining cross-country racetrack. Not a bad downhill course either. We are just waiting for the cats to be herded up. And then we will head down to the under 23 men's podium. Bart, fascinating race that. Slow burner, but the yeah. two of them put on a show, didn't they? 